Hi, this is Nick Bizai, and this is another in a series of hydraulic videos that I'm making for operator training. Today's topic is flow rates. So I'm going to share this screen with you if you'd be patient with me. And we'll get started. Okay, so hydraulics for operators, as we've mentioned in other videos, is um, some uh, mathematics that we use to determine uh, things like detention times uh, in order to quantify, quantify pressures and head-on pumps and elevated tanks. We use the math to determine velocities, flow rates through, water, through our water systems, and of course the amount of energy it takes to move that water through our systems. And as I mentioned in other videos, some of these hydraulic calculations are necessary before we can do further calculations such as dosage and feed rates and efficiencies and systems and so forth. So we have to master some of this math. And so we've broken it down into small components and today we'll do flow rates. Now flow rates, or sometimes it's called rate of flow, is a term we use in hydraulics that describes the amount of water flowing for a given unit of time. So there are really two concepts here. There's the amount of water, the volume of water that's, that's in motion here, and the amount of time that it takes to move that water, or how much of that water is moving per unit of time. So you're also gonna hear terms like gallons per minute or cubic feet per second. So there's two, two compounds that we gotta deal with here. Now, uh, just to mention that sometimes when you see these math uh, equations for flow rates, they often use the letter Q. I'll let that throw you. Q just is another term for flow rate. Whenever you see a capital Q, you know they're talking about flow rate. So flow rate or Q has to be calculated, determining those two things. We have to get the area of the vessel that's carrying the water. It's either gonna be a pipe or it's gonna be an open channel in a water plant, something like that. And of course, we also have to know the speed or the velocity of the water that's actually flowing through that pipe or channel. So the formula that we use is Q equals A times V. That is the area multiplied by the velocity. They often write these formulas in different ways, and I don't know why mathematicians have done these things over the years, but if you see any of these variations, it's really all the same thing. It's the flow rate equals the area times the velocity. So get used to seeing those different, uh, different ways of saying Q equal AV. Now here's an example flow rate calculation. This is a simple one where they give us some information. They're asking us, uh, what is the water flow rate in cubic feet per second in a pipe that has 0 0.19625 square feet of area surface area if the water moving through that pipe has a velocity of three feet per second? When I set this up, I put my formula there, Q equals A times V. The area the pipe was given to me of 0.19625 square feet the velocity was given to me at three feet per second. So I put my formula there and multiply the 0.19625 square feet times the three feet per second. And I'm going to get 0 0.589 cubic feet per second. If I wanted to change that, I would, I would multiply that by 7.48 to get the gallons per minute. So here's some things we need to remember when we do Q equals AV. The area of the vessel usually needs to be calculated. In the last example I gave you, I went ahead and calculated the area beforehand and put it on there. But normally in a problem that they give you, you're gonna to have to calculate the area. So the vessel through which the water is flowing is typically going to be a pipe or a channel, of course, and you're gonna to have to know the two formulas necessary to calculate the square area. So for a pipe, it's gonna be pi r squared, so it's gonna be 0.785 times the diameter squared. For a rectangular channel, you're gonna use the depth times the width. Another thing to remember is that area and velocity units must match. If area is in square feet, the velocity must be feet per unit time, like feet per second, FPS, feet per minute. You cannot multiply square inches by feet per second. You must convert one of the others to have, have them be the same. So you may need to convert answers back and forth between gallon per minute and cubic feet per second. So we're going to use a constant uh, to do that. And we're going to get into some of that kind of thing here. So here's the relationship between the circular and rectangular vessels. Here's a rectangular channel of flow. And you notice that we have 
on the bottom square area that's in blue facing you uh, that's denoted by the letter A. It has a depth and it has a width. You see the, the W on the bottom and a V going up and down. That's the depth times the width and that would give you the square area. There's also a V on top of the channel and that stands for velocity and we're going to use that in another video. The same thing happens in a square foot or square area of a cylinder or a pipe. You notice that we have another A, a square area, that disc. We also have a V for velocity, of course, and we, like I mentioned, we'll do that in, a, in another video. The point here to remember is that try to envision, and let's look at the left-hand side again. Try to envision that blue square area that we got by mentioning the, or by multiplying the depth times the width as a wafer-thin plane it has two dimensions to it. It has the depth and the width, but does not have any, any length. It doesn't go backwards. It's just a wafer thin area that represents the square area of the channel. If I stack another one behind it, I still have very little water to deal with, but I'm starting to gain some depth now, or some, I'm sorry, some, some length to that channel. If I attach an infinite number of these uh, wafer thin discs, or uh, rather, uh, uh, rectangular or square areas to one another, I'm going to start to build some volume of water. But that original disk, has, original uh, plane hasn't changed. It's just wafer thin, but I'm stacking them behind each other. If I can stack enough of these things up against one another for an entire foot, and that square foot area is, is uh, one square feet, when I multiply that time, that times that area of one air, one foot that I've stacked those those planes up to one another, I would have one cubic foot. So that's how volume works in a rectangular uh, channel by stacking these planes up against one another to guess to a certain length, and then multiplying that times the square area of the plane itself, and getting a cubic foot area, a cubic square inch area, or cubic inch area, whatever you're working with. The faster I move that through that channel, the greater the velocity is, the more, you, the more water per unit time I'm getting, but that's another video, we'll talk about that. And we have the same thing with the, the pipe on the right-hand side. We've got a, a disc, it's a square area. It's infinitely thin, has no dimensions to it other than the length and the width, just two dimensions. And if I can manage to stack another one just like it, right, right up flush to it, and another one, and another one, and another one, eventually I'm gonna gain some volume. And that entire disc, as it moves through there, if it moves a whole foot, and it started out as one square foot, if it moves a whole foot, I have one cubic foot of water. That's how square area works, by multiplying it times the length that it moves. And that's how you want to look at these square and square chair areas of channels and, and cylinders or pipes. Now here's a flow rate conversion where I got to calculate the area and then convert. They ask us, what's the flow rate in gallons per minute if the velocity in a 24-inch water main is 4.3 feet per second? I want to use my formula, Q equals A times V. And I calculate my area of the 24-inch main by, by multiplying 0 0.785 times the diameter squared. It's a two-foot diameter, so I'm multiplying two by two. I'm coming up with 3.14 square feet. Now, if my velocity was given to me at 4.3 feet per second, all I need to do to get Q equal AV is multiply the square foot area times 4.3 feet per second velocity, and I come up with 13.5 cubic feet per second. You see that I had to calculate the area first and then multiply by the velocity. Now, if I wanted that cubic feet per second change to gallons per minute, I would have to take 13.5 and multiply it by 7.48 because there are 7.48 gallons in every cubic foot, and I would come up with 101 gallons per second. And if I took that 101 gallons per second and multiplied by 60, I would come up with 6,060 gallons per minute, approximately. Here's some conversion factors that you use in hydraulics. This table, you'll see this table on all of the slides that I produce for, for the hydraulic series. For example, if I wanted to change days to minutes, I would multiply the days by 1,440 and would change it to minutes. If I wanted, for example, to change PSI to feet of head, I'd multiply by 2.31. Okay, so I'm going to close that out. That's one of the series of uh, hydraulic videos that we're producing. Hope this uh, makes sense to you. Do the other ones, and eventually they'll all be able to help you with your exams. Thank you.